Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Has, has your condition ever been got more deeper in knowledge and you've got more of an understanding of it? You know, whether it's root cause, do we have a root cause? Is there, uh, yeah, have you got any more information as your life's progressed? We, we're not sure what caused it. I mean, sometimes people can say genetics. They, my parents swear that they have one, but they didn't test people back in that time period. So I don't know if if they did or if they do or they don't. Um, I might have had a cousin, uh, you know, distant cousin that had it, but I'm not really uh, sure too much mm. about that. I, I know that none of my nieces that that have come up have had that. And I know my brother did not have, doesn't have that as well. So, I mean, we don't know how genetic it is yeah. and we don't, we're not really sure of the cause. And, mm. but I have understood throughout the years, uh, just how it has impacted me. Cause I remember a lot of people telling me, oh yeah, once you're done with high school, you're never going to have that problem again. And you couldn't, that person could have been more wrong on that because yeah. it does affect so much of my life. But what I've learned to do is identify when I'm having that issue and be able to find ways around it. And I think that is what really helps. If I struggle with something, then I'm thinking, okay, how can I help myself? What are the resources out there that I, that I can do? And another thing we found out was I had limited hand dexterity. And that wasn't until I was an adult. And after I found that out, I'm like, oh, the light bulb went off. That's why when I have... Th things will drop out of my hands. That's why I can't lock or unlock doors. And that even started to me writing about things like that. And it all comes down to one thing. It's just my brain is wired differently. That's why I confuse my right from my left. That's why I can't do math very well. And it's not an excuse, but it's just that understanding and that compassion I need to have with myself that certain things are going to be harder and I'm just going to have to look for solutions with them. Absolutely. And I, and I think if you were using it as an excuse, you wouldn't have done all the hours of study. You wouldn't have gone to every class. You would have just given up, stopped trying mm -hmm. and gone into maybe a dark space. But it certainly doesn't look like you've entered a dark space. No. Uh, as, well, on that, though, is it, have you ever entered a dark, dark space because of it? I was very negative for a lot of years and very scared because I thought, OK, everybody's telling me I can't do this. Everybody's saying you're, you're going to be so limited that I, that was really a fear of mine that I wasn't going to be able to find a job. I wasn't going to be able to handle having one. And a lot of people thought, Oh, you don't want to work. I had an ex that thought I didn't want to work. And it was like, no, I, I do want to work. These are my fears and in going into it. And I just wasn't a happy person. And I thought, well, this is just going to be, the only thing that's going to complete me is if I don't have a disability. And what really changed my thinking was when I graduated with that with the bachelor's degree. And I know that's not the thing for everybody and that's okay. But for me, that's what I needed to do. And yeah. it's not necessarily the degree. What it is, is I was empowering myself because I was focusing on what I could do and what I was good at. And that has just been the key to happiness in my life is focusing on what I can change, what I can control, what I love to do when I focus on reading or talking with people or photography, I am so much happier. But when you give me a math problem or you expect me to drive a car and I'm not going to be a happy person, but if I could just focus on what I can change, what I can control and, and just those happy that then I'm, I'm a much more upbeat person. Yeah. And you're right, that degree isn't for everybody, but for you, I think that line, that certificate of having that degree just represents uh, not the degree itself, but the journey that you had to go yes. on in your life, right? That's what it's about. Yeah, it's about the journey that I, that yeah. I went through and what I needed in my life. And I think once people find what they, what they want and what they can do, 
it's just so much more powerful than when you focus on what you don't have. Yeah, completely. I don't mean to go to the negative side again, but mm -hmm. did you, when you entered the workspace after graduating, did you ever encounter any problems? We've, we've encountered problems with peers and, and, and students mm -hmm. and, and friends and, and, and teachers and so on. Did you ever encounter problems with bosses or leaders or colleagues in the workplace? Yeah, yes, I, I did. I can remember oh. that I had, sometimes I had jobs that didn't work out. I would get frustrated or the employer would get frustrated with me because I couldn't do that. And I didn't know how to ask for accommodations. I've also had, uh, there was a job that I was in and I, I went in for another position, but they didn't want to offer that one to me. So I ended up working in a human resource uh, office doing payroll. Definitely should have ran. <laughs> But and it was no surprise that that didn't work out. And the, this, ironically, the place was an agency that helped people with disabilities in their home. But they were so used to helping out people with physical disabilities, they didn't understand why I couldn't do uh, that. I had a learning disability, and it was hard for me to do uh, clerical duties. And I made a lot of mistakes, and I was fired. And then. In the States, if you you are fired, you get what is called unemployment compensation for a couple, uh, for so many weeks. They tried challenging that because they thought that I went to this job, took a couple buses over, only to get fired so I could collect money. Uh, we went into my hearing and I had a great, I had a great attorney and she's like, I don't think somebody with this disability is going to go into a job and take a and go over it because I was actually going on a couple different buses to go to this job to simply fail so she could collect money that it would not have been worth it and it, it's sometimes it can be even hard in my job now too I mean if I don't have the understanding people do need to know that I can't do math and that can be hard whenever I get to a new person. I have to advocate for myself and tell the people in charge, I simply cannot do math. And sometimes they're very understanding with that. And sometimes it can be hard for other people to get that because everybody thinks, uh, oh, you can do it. You'll learn with the kids. You'll, you'll learn how to unlock a locker with the kids. And you have to just explain sometimes, no, no I can't do that. No, yeah. You, you, that's powerful within itself again isn't it you just saying that you have to advocate for yourself and, mm -hmm. and that's powerful for whatever scenario anyone's going through advocate right. for yourself whether it's the problem with the maths or whether it's a problem mm -hmm. with writing or whether it's a problem outside of the school just to yeah. be able to advocate yourself so that's that's a powerful message yeah absolutely um yeah, that's it, it's a shame that you that perception comes along with it. But again, if you just stay true to yourself um, and, and they build that relationship with you, they can learn in the moment too, right? It's an opportunity for you to teach them, even though you can't learn maths, but it's an opportunity for you to teach them about mm -hmm. something else that they're not probably used to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, c coming towards the, um, I suppose, more the present now then, um, mm -hmm. unless we've missed anything. Because I'd like, nope, I'd I think love, we got everything. I, yeah. We got everything. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad about that because I, I really want to focus on the the, the goodness that you've changed. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to sound intelligent with this question, but I'd be stealing it. But you wrote a statement on your social media about shame and confidence and 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 how you had that messy middle. And I've kind of just converted converted that statement into a, a into <laughs> a very intelligent question. But the question is, and I've got it written down here. How did you go from? shame because it sounds like anyone who's listened to this now there's a lot of shame that goes around this from from a childhood to uh, even leading to your adulthood and how people have spoken to you and and treated you and so on uh, but how did you go from shame to turning this into confidence and having this disability at the same time i think what i went through with shame was i used to think oh i'm in school i'm everyone's going to find out you had a disability and that that was a shameful thing. And I went to hide from it. And I was really unsuccessful with doing that. And whenever I don't see people can't look my, look at me and say that I have a, dis can't see that I have a disability necessarily. Mm. And if I don't advocate for myself and I don't share that, then people just presume that I'm being lazy or that I'm not trying. And, but if I'm honest and I'm more open about that, 
that is a journey. And a lot of my journey with that confidence has come through success. It's going to college and, and getting good grades and going there and, and getting the degree that that's come with that. It's come with going to finding a job and that I love and just having that confidence to go in there. And also advocacy never gets easier. It's never easy to ask for accommodations. It's never, it doesn't get a lot easier for me. But what I do get is I get better at it every single time that I ask, I tell somebody that I have a disability, it gets a lot easier for, or it gets a lot better for me. And also, I think writing about it has also brought that uh, from that, that confidence from that shame. Because whenever I write about it, I try to be very real about having a disability. I, I put a positive spin on it, but I'm also very honest that there are some moments that aren't, <clears throat> that are difficult. And I think when I got that first article published uh, on the Mighty about my struggle to open up locks with limited hand dexterity, I finally took the advice from that friend. I didn't find that there was people that were saying, oh, I don't want to be your friend because she has a disability. I had people running towards me saying, that's my story. And I thought I was the only one that had that. And you gave me that verbiage that I'm not alone. And other people were encouraged to share their story or, or to write about that. So I have to remember that when I talk and I'm vulnerable and I talk about having a disability and what I can't do, that also gives people the permission to share uh, things that they struggle with as well. Yeah, you attract people into your life, don't you, when you open up mm -hmm. about it? I found that. I found like when I was, I was being bullied in the workplace about nine years ago mm -hmm. and I felt like I was the only person in the world. I know in reality, deep down, when I came out of my own conscious, subconscious self, that I know there are other people being bullied, but because it's your trauma and you're living in this dark space, you mm -hmm. just feel so alone and you feel like you're the only one, don't you? But when you start to talk about it, hence the book and hence why I do the podcast, you attract mm -hmm. these people to come your way. And it's weird how they just, it, we talk about manifestation from the book, The Source, Tar Dr. Tara Swart, but it's like, when you start to talk about it, you do attract those people, don't you? So it's it's amazing that you took um, what you said you put on the shelf for many years, but you've taken it back down. And you, yeah. you wrote a book, didn't you, as well? Can you talk to us about your book? I know what it's sure, called, but I, I, I think it's your your light to share. Sure, I would love to. I actually had, it was not 100% my book. I had three stories published in an anthology last summer called Rediscovering Your Purpose, uh, stories of uh, grace and I had a chance to go to these workshops where I would write about, uh, we, we had different prompts. And some of them were uh, prompts about, uh, you know, fun things like our hair. And there was other ones about our favorite place. And yeah. we had one about what's the most important lesson that you've learned in life. And different people came and they, they had different responses. I was the only one that had a learning disability. Some of the other people in, in the group, they might have had a mental health struggle. Some of them might, uh, some of them had addictions that they've had to work on. So we all put our stories in this. There, I had three of them published, and it's available for purchase on Amazon. Nice. Well, I'll um, I'll put it. I'll yes. get a collection of links, and I'll put them yes. in the show notes. So if anyone wants mm -hmm. to take a look at it, and uh, social media and the Facebook page and stuff like yep. that, I've already got that. But uh, if I take a list from you, I'll put it in the show notes, and we'll uh, we'll 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 anyone wants to connect and look at it, they can. And if I if I might try and get something so I could put it on here as well, that'd be amazing. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm I'm so glad you did that. And it, there is a lot. I used to laugh at when people used to say, "Write it down." And I was like, oh, you know, that typical boy was like, oh, that's girly. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> not to be disrespectful, but I did that. I'm just being open and honest. I did, that's how I felt. And then mm -hmm. I realized how powerful it was when I wrote it down. Um, just having it on a piece of paper kind of just helped me a little bit uh, come out of the darkness. Um, so, yeah, it's great. You then got, you met your husband. Um, yes. How old were you when you met your husband? I was in my late twenties yeah. and I was really frustrated because I was in a lot of broken relationships before that. And I thought, Oh, am I ever going to meet somebody? And finally I just prayed and I said, God, I give this to you. I said, do not send me anybody until it's the right person. I can be happy on my own. And sure enough, whenever I wasn't, when I least expected it, I met my husband. I couldn't have planned it. I was volunteering at, our, at an art center and he was coming in that night to play guitar. 
and he saw me and I had a red dress on. I was on the street. And he goes, wow, who's that girl? Where's she going? I'm going to go there. And he was already going to the art center too. Oh. And he was playing guitar that night. And it turns out we had mutual friends and we got to know each other. We started out as friends that summer and he asked me out uh, right before Thanksgiving Nice. And he was he didn't live near in our area. He actually lived near Philadelphia, and oh. he would come home once a month. And the following month, uh, right before Christmas, we had our first date, and we've been together ever since. And looking back on certain things, we were in the same place at the same time, but during certain things, but we just were blind to each other. And it's just so funny to look back on that, that we were meant to be together. It just it had to be that right time that, that we connected. That tends to happen, though, doesn't it? When you go looking for it, you always kind of you look too hard. So therefore, you kind of yeah. look for the, the symbol of the relationship, not the person you're going to be in the relationship with. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're not looking, um, the relationship category box kind of goes out the window and the person comes through, if that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I just made that up on the spot. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so you're leading your own way by you work with school, you work with children um, mm -hmm. a, a, as a power educator. Is that yes. correct? That so is, for those that who is don't, correct. Sorry, for those who don't know what a power educator is, um, could you just extend on that and then we'll, we'll, sure. we'll tie things up? Sure. I am a, te I'm a teacher's aide, so what I do is I help reinforce uh, what the teacher is learning, um, what the teacher is teaching. So the teacher will go in, she'll teach a lesson, and, I'll, and then when she gives the assignment, I will go in and I will help ex reinforce that to a student. I'll help explain that. I'm, I get that opportunity to read a test to a student. I get to uh, just talk with them and just just follow in with whatever the, t the, the teacher is doing. And I think it's just such a unique perspective to, to be able to be that person for a student that has a disability with being a, an educator that has one myself. And is it a school that is um, focused on disabilities then? We have a public school. So our yep. students that come in, some of them don't have disabilities and they're in a regular ed classroom or they, they could be in a class, another kind of class. But we also have self-contained rooms. And then we have students with disabilities that also go into a general ed curriculum as well. And that's yep. where I love to be at is in that general ed curriculum to, to be able to help our students that have disabilities. Yeah, nice. Sorry, my light in my studio is on a timer to go for a quarter to 11 because <laughs> okay. I bring a bulb from the hallway into my studio yeah. and it's on a timer for quarter to 11 and it just went off. So I have to put but, it back uh, on my phone. Sorry about that. It goes dark. It's happened in a few episodes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's beautiful, uh, Michelle. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Um, you know, if you were here, we'd probably in the same be, be in some of the same classrooms together. Um, yes, it would be amazing. probably. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, is there any other ways apart from your blogging? You obviously do a lot of blogs with your Facebook and and, and mm -hmm. your book, your contributions to the book, and what you're doing. Your world. Is there anything else that you can connect with before I? Because I finish off with a couple, two final questions. You see, but before we go to that, is there anything that we've missed today that you feel is important to get across? I think we got everything. Oh, beautiful! So, Michelle, if somebody, um. If, you, if somebody was listening to this who's got a friend, family member, or they're going through it themselves, and you could give them a general piece of advice, I feel like I already know you feel like you've answered this, but if you could give them a general piece of information, uh, sorry, advice, what do you think the best advice would be if you could give it to yourself or somebody in s similar to your scenario? I would tell them that success doesn't always come in the package that you expect, but sometimes comes in something even better. Oh, that's going to be your guest gem. Uh, I create <laughs> guest gems for each of my guests. So um, I'm going to make a note of that. Package was a key word there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. mm, I like that. Okay. So I don't know if I told you in the pre-interview, but I normally end the, uh, the thingy, the interview um, with about purpose. I love the word purpose. What do you believe your purpose is in life? I think my purpose in life is to be able to encourage, empower, and educate people with and without learning disabilities. Oh, 
couldn't have said it any better than myself. That's a perfect one-liner. Yeah, that's awesome. Michelle, thank you for being open, vulnerable, and, and sharing your journey. Um, I hope you find it powerful. I feel like you've done it a few times, uh, obviously mm-hmm. with the book and other podcasts that you do. But thank you for joining me on my journey, being open once again at such an early time in the morning. But you do stand for people advocating for themselves. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, the a big, big message that people can take away from today and you and your journey. So thank you again for joining me on mine. And uh, I appreciate your time, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, well, stay. let's stay in touch. And um, yes. you never know, we might have another story to do in the future. Yeah, we may. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, thank you. And to everybody else, um, please um, take what you need from Michelle and um, come back next week for uh, next week's guest. Uh, have a great week, everyone. And we'll, we'll see you really soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.